Hey guys, so a lot of you have been sending me messages online, mostly asking me specifically about this new article from Nintendo Life where they kind of talk about, uh, well, they talk about the homebrew scene for the Nintendo Switch. And if you guys remember, I have talked about the homebrew scene here and there, right? I've talked about it a decent amount um, at times when there were breakthroughs, things like that. And there kind of was a breakthrough at one point. I didn't really talk about it because it didn't seem super really pertinent to the whole situation because you can't run it past firmware 3.0. Oh, in fact, I, I honestly can feel like I could talk about it to an extent because there are some people don't like when YouTubers talk about this stuff because they feel like it hurts the system. Uh, this really won't hurt the system at all. You can't run it past firmware 3, which is pretty old now since most of us are on version 4. 0.1, I believe now. So we've all kind of moved past the ability to use this software anyway. And at this point, for what I'm hearing from other people, uh, switches are starting to ship with firmware beyond 3.0 now at this time. So it's going to be really difficult to really use this now anyway, unless there ever is figure out a way to downgrade it, which when, when I would downgrade PS3s, it was a whole process to do that. Internally, hardware, you, you had to flash the NOR on the board. It was a whole thing. It, it was insane. It's something that normal people wouldn't really do. But there was a mild breakthrough with uh, the Switch when it comes to uh, loading homebrew. That's right. They, they have now gotten to a point where you can load homebrew on the Nintendo Switch. So what exactly am I talking about here? Well, uh, it was, I think, last week, maybe a week and a half ago, um, the team behind ReSwitched, okay, they, they announced that Pega Switch can now support uh, user home, really user code execution, essentially. And you may be asking me, what is Pega Switch? I really haven't gone over this, at least I don't think I have. Uh, and Pega Switch was interesting because it uses the one thing that I, I kind of talked about as not something Nintendo didn't want to put in to the Switch. You remember what I'm talking about? The web browser. Remember how a while ago it was this big, this big issue with a lot of gamers that the Switch wasn't going to launch with a web browser, and it was like, why aren't they launching with a web browser? This is why they didn't want to put a web browser at, at the forefront until they could figure everything out, because Pega Switch, which I'm going to show you now, uh, uses WebKit to pretty much have the system do what it needs it to do to execute this code. Now, all right on the front of Pega Switch, you can go there and take a look. This is what it says. Pega Switch is an exploit toolkit for the Nintendo Switch. By taking over WebKit, we are able to read, write, memory, call native functions, and otherwise explore the functionality of the Switch from the domain of the WebKit process. This does not currently enable homebrew software, but is built to allow other hackers to work toward that goal. Now, it still says it doesn't allow homebrew However, this whole thing is very new, so it's still very much in the, um, in the I guess you could even say, le before alpha stages, because they're still working for it to completely uh, allow it to function with homebrew, but some have at least gotten smaller programs to work, and at this point, the team of RetroArc, who does things like RetroPie, a lot of uh, those more... Um, emulators for Super Nintendo, Nintendo, all that stuff, they have talked about at least starting to program and design something for reswitched Pega, uh, Pega Switch, which would be interesting because that means something like RetroPie could exist on the Nintendo Switch. Now, I will say this, if you are still not on firmware 3.0 for whatever reason, whether you haven't connected your system to the internet, or maybe you did just buy a new one pretty recently, and you open it up and you find out it's on like two points, 2 point, I don't know, 8 or something like that. If you do want to get to uh, to 3.0 and not jump over it by connecting the internet, it, according to them, if you use Pokin Tournament, it will, or uh, Pokin Tournament DX, it will upgrade you to 3.0 and no further. So don't connect to the internet, just grab a copy of Pokin Tournament, pop it in because the carts have updates and they'll update it to 3 and technically you can then use Pega Switch to load Whatever the, whatever uh, programmers come up with, it could be a couple things. I remember with the Wii when that became hacked, we loaded Quake on that thing. We were we loaded a program to run DVDs, which was obviously something that the the, Switch, the the Wii shouldn't be able to do. We loaded all kinds of emulators. I mean, I mean we were running Commodore 64 stuff on that thing, and it was really cool. I mean, there was some neat stuff going on there, and that's kind of what's going to happen here with the Switch. It's going to go a step further though, because the Tegra is a known chip. It's a known uh, architecture. It's something that they can program for with an ARM chip that'd be a little easier than something like say uh well in this case the Wii which was some it was an overclocked GameCube processor and a whole thing so they had to design programs specifically for it 
Whereas in this case, pretty much anything that runs on ARM or Integra in like the, the, the Shield TV or whatever, will probably run on this Switch. And then there's some other interesting things that probably will happen here as well. Things like custom firmware, things like overclocking. That's really interesting, I think, to a lot of people. What can the Tegra chip do if it has the restraints taken off of it, right? With this, this low-level API that Nintendo and NVIDIA built in, what can the system do if it's not being throttled by uh, the, 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 the OS itself? What if it's not held to a low clock count? Can it, can it really push series frames in something like Doom? Could be interesting to see. Now this thing is still in a very, very young state. Uh, you're not gonna see switches it's just modded and hacked all over the place. Don't worry about that. It's more a hobbyist thing right now because 3.0, that firmware gets older every single day. Every time a new update comes out, that firmware gets a little bit older. So we're gonna get to a point a year or two years from now because I, I don't know if they're gonna make any strides past 3.0. Honestly, with what I remember seeing with the PS3, when it got when it got patched it was patched for good you still need to downgrade it to 3.55 i believe for you to take any advantage of of uh modding and custom firmware and doing all this stuff to it now will there eventually be a way to downgrade maybe but they have said that there are flags internal almost like hardware flags that if you try to downgrade it it there's like a fuse that blows and then it's bricked. So I don't think you're going to be downgrading this thing anytime soon. So I wouldn't get excited. If anything, I would say uh, keep your system at 3.0 if you want to do this. Or go out and look for a system that is... That is I don't even know how you'd find one that old because the, they keep flying off the shelves and recycling with new stock. So you're probably not going to find it, but it's an interesting scene to keep an eye on. It's not going to affect Nintendo sales at all. I know people who are like, oh, what if they start pirating games? It won't matter. Like... 2% of the population of Switches are probably, maybe even less than that, maybe 1% are running, uh, are going to be running homebrew anyway. So I wouldn't worry about it. It's just a fun thing to keep an eye on because it could potentially show us what an, an, an unleashed Tegra inside the Switch can do, like I said, with low-level APIs. So keep an eye on that at least and keep an eye on any programs and stuff they actually get on there. It could be fun to see, right? It's just fun. Thanks guys for watching. Just know this. No, the homebrew scene isn't exploding on every single Switch out there. It's on a few, but it, it's it's something cool to keep an eye on. It's more of a novelty at this point and a hobbyist, uh, really a hobbyist activity here. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.